Hello and welcome to the Hella Academy. In this video, we would like to inform you about the NOx sensor. Now the question is, of course, what does the NOx sensor actually do and how does it work? Well, first, we need to go into a little more detail. The exhaust gases produced by the combustion of diesel or petrol contain pollutants. These pollutants are, of course, harmful to people and the environment. For this reason, various catalytic converters or soot particle filters are used in modern vehicles to reduce these pollutants. In addition to the familiar pollutants such as carbon dioxide or soot particles, nitrogen oxides, i.e. NOx, are of course also produced. Nitrogen oxides are produced by high temperatures, high pressure, or excess oxygen during combustion in the engine. In order for fuel to burn more or less ideally, approximately 14.7 kilograms of air is required for one kilogram of fuel. In this case, the combustion ratio would be ideal. However, in order to reduce the fuel consumption of the engines, a rather lean mixture is used under certain load conditions, such as when traveling at a constant speed. In other words, more air than fuel, so lambda is greater than 1. This naturally influences the chemical conversion in the catalytic converter, and the NOx value rises again. What can we actually do about this? Or what can the vehicle manufacturer do? This diesel vehicle is fitted with a urea-based SCR system for NOx reduction. This means that by specifically adding a reducing agent, i.e. AdBlue, to the exhaust track, a reaction takes place in which nitrogen oxides, i.e. NOx, are converted into nitrogen, N2, and water, H2O. That already sounds good. And now our NOx sensor comes into play. And here we have such a sensor. The NOx sensor consists of a probe and a control unit, which are permanently connected to each other as a unit via a wiring harness. This measuring probe here, which is screwed into the exhaust pipe, measures the nitrogen oxide content in the exhaust gas flow. The control unit of our sensor then communicates the measured values to the engine control unit. And how does the NOx measurement work? Well, the way the sensor works is based on measuring the residual oxygen content. Quite simply and reduced to the essentials, it works as follows. There are two chambers in the sensor. The exhaust gas flows through a diffusion barrier into the first chamber of the probe. There, a solid electrolyte separates the oxygen components from the NOx components. The NOx components then flow through another diffusion barrier into a second chamber. This contains an electrode that separates the NOx into its nitrogen and oxygen components. The nitrogen diffuses outwards through a porous layer. The oxygen components are pumped out of the chamber via a measuring cell. The sensor's control unit recognizes from the power consumption of the pump whether there is a lot or a little NOx present and then transmits this information to the engine control unit via the data bus. The control unit then uses this information to calculate how much AdBlue needs to be injected upstream of the SCR catalytic converter in order to achieve optimum nitrogen oxide reduction. If the system now has a pre-cat and post-cat sensor, the downstream sensor has the task of determining the efficiency of the reduction catalytic converter. Now the question is, how is the diagnosis of such a sensor actually carried out? Depending on the vehicle and system, the NOx sensor is monitored by higher level control units installed in the vehicle. System relevant information can then of course be easily read out using a suitable diagnostic device. If the sensor fails, an error is stored in the error memory of the engine control unit. In our example, we have interrupted the sensor signal. This means that if we look here, in the error memory, we find error 2FB800. 
which indicates a communication error of the NOx sensor after the SCR catalytic converter. And now, let's take a look at the parameters that we recorded in advance. We had removed the post-catalytic converter sensor. This means that, as can be seen from the values, the second sensor shows a minus PPM value due to the missing information. In this case, the control unit outputs a fixed substitute value that no longer changes. Let's compare this with the measured values that we recorded during a test drive. If the system is functioning correctly, both values are now displayed by the control unit. This means that the values are always in motion during driving as the mixture composition changes depending on the operating status. The effect of the SCR catalytic converter can be clearly seen from the parameters shown before and after the catalytic converter. And now, let's take a look together at how such a sensor is replaced. So, we have now installed the new sensor. Now the question arises, is there anything else to consider? Depending on the vehicle manufacturer and system, it may also be necessary to adapt the sensor to the vehicle. For example, the learning values are reset or the new control unit is learnt in the system. I have one more tip for you. The sensor should always be replaced as a complete unit. Repairs are not permitted as the components are matched to each other. I hope you enjoyed this article. Further information can of course be found at Hella Tech World. Thank you for your attention and see you next time at the Hella Academy. Thank you.